Hillary Clinton is in Iowa and Marco Rubio is in our studio. Your one-stop shop for 2016 news. I'm Jake Tapper. This is The Lead. The politics lead, the Scooby has landed. Her van has pulled into Iowa and Hillary Clinton does a meet and greet on a small college campus. But will this low-key rollout of her campaign do enough to woo skeptical voters in a state that gave her a bronze trophy last time? And fresh from his Miami announcement, Senator Marco Rubio will tell you why he wants to be president and how he thinks he can beat the Clinton juggernaut. Coming up live in a one-on-one -on -one interview right here on The Lead. And the national lead, forget cockpit door locks and all that extra TSA security. A startling new report reveals that soon all terrorists will need is a laptop and a Wi-Fi connection to possibly take control of a commercial plane. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to The Lead. I'm Jake Tapper. We're going to begin today with the politics lead and the first that we are directly hearing from Hillary Clinton at her first official campaign stop talking to voters about why she wants your vote. She did so in this new modest campaign style, taking the eye out of Iowa, as it were, hitting the Hawkeye State, not with a raucous rally to lay out her 2016 agenda, but with a more intimate gathering with teachers and students at a community college in the small town of Monticello. A lot of people in the last few days have asked me, well, you know, why do you want to do this? And what motivates you? And I've thought a lot about it, and I guess the short answer is um, I've been fighting for children and families my entire adult life. Before the roundtable, Clinton engaged in what you might call a little coffee talk at a quaint family-owned business in LeClaire, Iowa, population 4,000. And just in case you didn't get the memo that Clinton was learning from the mistakes of her last campaign, she has pulled a page from her former Democratic rival's fundraising playbook, much, much like then-Senator Barack Obama in 2008, Clinton is initially asking for small donations from her supporters, as little as $5. The hope is that this new approach will help her build a broader base of grassroots support. Let's go live now to CNN senior political correspondent Brianna Keeler. She's in Monticello, Iowa. Brianna, Iowans, as you know, they can be a tough crowd. Did Clinton seem to connect with them at all? No, she connected very much uh, with the uh, folks inside of this event. There is, I will tell you, one protester here, and he appears to have found our live shot. Um, but there were three students and three faculty that she spoke with. You said she took the eye out of Iowa. She certainly did. She did say about her rationale for running that she doesn't want to walk away from the challenges that the U.S. faces. Um, but at the same time, most of the questions, aside from three lone questions about education and family, were questions that Hillary Clinton posed herself to those in the round table. Hillary Clinton back on the campaign trail. Her first public stop, a small coffee shop in LeClaire, Iowa, a town with fewer than 4,000 residents. From there, it was on to a round table conversation at a satellite campus of Kirkwood Community College in Monticello. I'm going to work hard to meet as many people. I'll be rolling out ideas and policies about what I think will work but I want it to be informed by what's actually working and to build on what works. It's a far cry from the look and feel of her campaign eight years ago, marked by big rallies filled with thousands of cheering supporters. And I'm in it to win it. <laughs> and travel around the Hawkeye State in what the campaign dubbed the helicopter. Iowa Democrats ultimately dealt Clinton's presidential hopes a serious blow by sending her to a third place finish in the caucuses. Well, we're going to take this enthusiasm and go right to New Hampshire tonight. Now she's looking for a second chance. I'm back. And going for a more personal touch, putting the focus on who she is calling everyday Americans. I'm running for president because I think that Americans and their families need a champion, uh, and I want to be that champion. I want to stand up and fight for people so that they can not just get by, but they can get ahead and they can stay ahead. I've talked today with some Democratic operatives here in Iowa, and uh, overall, they really like this low-key rollout. But there was an interesting note, some of them telling CNN privately that her appearance in Ohio on the way here, Jake, this is the Chipotle appearance uh, where she stopped in Joliet uh, to get a bite to eat. 
they look at that and they see this uh, this appearance where she didn't really seem to schmooze much, especially with these voters that are in a key swing state. And they said that's not going to fly here in Iowa. Also another key state uh, for Democrats, not just in the primary, but in the general election where you would expect it would really matter for Hillary Clinton if she's uh, going to clinch the nomination, as so many expect she will. Brianna Keeler, thank you so much. Of course, beyond chowing down at Chipotle, as we just saw, and showcasing her knowledge of middle America's vast interstate highway system, just what message is Clinton trying to relay to voters on these first few days of her campaign? Let's go now to communications director for the Clinton campaign, Jennifer Palmieri. Jennifer, good to see you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Happy to be with you, Jake. So we just heard Secretary Clinton say in that uh, meeting um, that, quote, there's something wrong when CEOs make 300 times more than the typical worker. Okay, that's a good soundbite. What does Clinton propose to do about it? And did she try to do anything about it during her time in the Senate? Well, I think, you know, what she, uh, what she is doing on this tour, and you saw a lot of it in this uh, roundtable that she did where, you know, she was there for about 90 minutes. Is she's thought a lot about the challenges that are before the country, um, you know, what she thinks we would need to do in order to, uh, uh, so that the middle class could get ahead. She has a lot of policy ideas, but she wants to come out into the country and talk to people one on one individually to see what, um, you know, what are they trying to get out of their lives? What are the, what are the thing, obstacles that are standing in their way? What are their ideas and what will actually work? So you saw her today. She, you know, offered up a couple of ideas that she's thinking about. And um, you will see uh, a lot more coming in the, you know, we have about 570 days, 570 plus days. So right. uh, she is, I think you'll see her, uh, she's got some ideas about issues that she's pushing on that she'll be talking about. And, uh, but this part, like the next, you know, four or five weeks, she really uh, wants to hear from people, get their ideas, and you know, like, and I think along this time we'll be rolling out some policy proposals. But you'll see more later on in the uh, as the campaign progresses. Okay, I understand. It's her first few days. She doesn't have a a, a big document of, of policy she's going to present yet. But as you know, there are a lot of people, a lot of voters on the progressive left, uh, either urging a more mm -hmm. liberal candidate like Elizabeth Warren to run, or urging Secretary Clinton uh, to be bold and not just pay lip service mm -hmm. to the populist wing of the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. Uh, can she credibly mm -hmm. offer a plan uh, that will do something about income inequality? We're hearing all the candidates from Ted Cruz all the way over to Bernie Sanders talk about income inequality. Does she have a plan that she will present to voters that will do something about it? So I think you'd be hard pressed to find someone who's a more committed progressive that's achieved more uh, in their career than Hillary Clinton. So this is someone who going back for decades has been fighting for kids and families and she has, I don't think people think that Hillary Clinton is any short on any policy ideas. It's something she spent many months uh, thinking about, but she doesn't want to just come, come right out uh, two days after having announced and said, these are the answers. She wants to talk to people and hear what their ideas are. She wants to find out other things that are working in the country. So I promise you. And, there is no doubt that she believes we need really bold ideas to help solve the problems that we're facing. Um, but she wants to talk to other people before we, uh, before she gets to the point where she's saying, I'm convinced this is the right solution for the country. All right, I'll, this is your first appearance and her first day, so I'll rain check you on that one, uh, Palmieri, but, but let, let's move on. Marco, yeah, 500, is, yeah, we, we got a lot of time. It's 500 something days if she, get, if she gets a nomination, I just might put that out there, but in any case. All right, that's it, you're right. You're right. Marco you're Rubio right. yesterday cast Secretary Clinton as the candidate of yesterday from yesterday. What's your counter to that? What is her large bore vision for the future? Uh, her large board vision for the future is that she wants the middle class to be able to get ahead and stay ahead. That's something uh, we've come a long way, but that's that's like the big, it's the obvious big, huge problem still facing our country. Uh, that is her big idea. She, um, you know, I know that there's a lot of attention on the other side about Hillary Clinton. She's focused on people in Iowa. She's focused on people that she met in her drive along the way. Um, she's having a great time doing that. You know, she's thinking about the future. So. Uh, you know, I know some people think the, the election is about her. She is not one of them. Don't stop thinking about tomorrow. Jennifer Palmieri, thank you so much. Appreciate it. <laughs> and in just Thanks, a few Jay. minutes, of course, my live interview with Republican presidential candidate Marco 
Rubio. That is coming up on the show. But first to some breaking political news. The White House says that Cuba should no longer be considered a state sponsor of terror. The president made this announcement just seconds ago, filing the paperwork today to erase Cuba's name from the list of states that finance and fund terrorists around the globe. In a brief statement notifying Congress of his recommendation, President Obama cited assurances from Havana that Cuba will not support acts of international terror in the future. Assurances that were perhaps given this past weekend when President Obama met with Cuban President Raul Castro. Cuba has been on this terror list since 1982. In national news, a terrifying new warning from the federal government about the vulnerability of U.S. passenger jets. A shocking report released just minutes ago says some new planes can be easily hacked, allowing a person to take control of the aircraft, even possibly crashing it into the ground. One pilot with whom we spoke says it's easy to do. That's next.